So I like how the discussion of thunderstorms is organized because we're going to talk about kind of a simple thunderstorm cell. And then you've probably heard of, if you're into severe weather around here, you've heard of supercells. And so then we'll kind of build to supercells, supercell thunderstorms. And then we'll talk about actually how thunderstorm cells can, um, it's almost like they don't organize themselves, but we can have a system where we have multiple thunderstorm cells all working together. But we're going to start with kind of a simple, um, this, a simple scenario of unstable air that's moist, rises, and it's it's instability. It's un, it's it's un, uh, yeah, it's instability actually then um, creates what we're going to talk about more. At least it creates lightning within this this. Um, this cell and so we get what we call a thunderstorm. Um, so uh, the simplest would be something that doesn't last very long. It's called an air mass thunderstorm. These oftentimes come up, um, develop in the um, develop in the afternoons and they and they don't last very long. So but in all thunderstorm cells, now this would include the supercells we're going to talk about later and the systems where we have multiple thunderstorm cells working together. Each cell goes through these three stages, and so I do have builds here. The three stages are important, and we'll be talking about them on the next slides. We have the cumulus stage or the building stage. We have the mature stage, and if that sounds like the scariest stage of a thunderstorm cell, you're right, the mature stage. Um, and then we have a dissipating stage, and if that sounds like it's kind of petering out, it is. So each thunderstorm cell, whether it's an air mass thunderstorm cell or a cell part of a a complex or a small line of thunderstorms, or if it's a supercell, they go through these three stages. So um, this is just kind of thrown in there. Uh, we talked about different types of clouds, and these fluffy clouds would be cumulus clouds, right? And they look pretty harmless, but um, in, in an air mass thunderstorm, what can happen kind of quickly is basically um, and I'm going to talk about something called a, um, a capping inversion, um, but the, the, the air can change kind of quickly um, to this. And one of the things that they talk about in uh, severe weather training, oops, I'm going to go back, is if you see, let's see if I can get the pointer to work. I just wanted to highlight this second cloud here. There it is. It's producing behind the scenes. It's not real happy. Um, this second cloud here, can you see where it is? Um, the texture of the cloud is really crunchy. And what they what they warn you in in spotter training, looking for severe weather, is that the crispier or the crunchier, that's kind of like cauliflower, that your your cumulus cell, your cumulus cloud is, then the more recent the development, and it's still developing perhaps, and and you may get some precipitation out of it. So the three stages, the cumulus stage is the developing stage. Um, now, these red arrows in these three figures all represent, um, or two figures, I guess, all represent what we call the updraft. OK? And it's literally a movement of air upward. Now, we talked about the hydrostatic equilibrium in which uh, basically we do have a, a vertical pressure gradient from high to low to, to low pressure at upper elevations all the time, but gravity balances that out. So there's really not, not the movement in general that you see. But we also talked about unstable air. Unstable air is going to want to what to do what? Rise. And air is unstable if it's less dense than its surrounding. It has a type of buoyancy, and that could be if it's warmer or if it's more moist. So we get movement of air um, uh, creating an updraft here. Um, notice that we've got a few terms here. We have the lifting condensation level. I was going to draw it in here. This is the LCL. And one of the things that we know if condensation is occurring within that chunk of air, remember that um, condensing releases energy, uh, thermal energy the latent heat of condensation. So basically, it's kind of a uh, moist air that's condensing. It's going to be uh, warmer than its surroundings. Notice the crisp, crisp edges here in the cumulus stage. Another thing happening in the cumulus stage is entrainment. And entrainment is um, basically you have dry air 
that is finding its way into and it only happens at the edges. So this is my dry air coming into the cloud where we have liquid water uh, cloud droplets. And so when that dry air comes in, what happens is um, what used to be a big cloud droplet around the dry air turns to a smaller cloud droplet. Specifically, some of that liquid um, evaporates. So then basically, along the edges here, you have an assortment of sizes. You have smaller cloud droplets. And actually, it's this uh, multiple sizes, including the smaller cloud droplets due to entrainment at the edges, that can help the, um, the, the um, uh, the collision coalescence process that we talked about with regard to um, precipitation, um, uh, the formation of ultimately precipitation within a cloud. So that's the cumulus stage. And then we have the mature stage. So this would be the scary stage. So if you look at this stage, notice that we both have the updraft. Okay, that's your updraft. And now this blue is what we call a downdraft. And the downdraft actually is um, created by the movement of the liquid as it's going to go ahead and it got heavy enough and it's going to fall from the clouds. And as it moves down, the precipitation, right, as it moves down it creates a, if I take my hand and go like this, I create basically a, a movement of air near my hand and that's what the liquid water droplets do as they precipitate. They create that downdraft. So downdrafts are associated with then a region of precipitation underneath the cloud. So we have an updraft, and actually this updraft is important um, for this cell to go ahead and sustain itself because it is feeding the, um, the, the moist air to go ahead and um, collide and coalesce to form liquid water droplets that can precipitate. So this is the mature stage. And in the next part, when we start to talk about lightning, actually when the up the, we have an updraft and a downdraft, okay, I don't know if you can hear the, almost the friction there. And actually, this is great for creating uh, differences in charge within a cloud that can ultimately is important for lightning to occur. So mature stages are where we get our lightning. Um, I don't know if you can see that thunderbolt from the base of the cloud. We get our heavy rain here. We can get sometimes a shaft, uh, a hail shaft. And during a mature stage is actually sometimes a little wall cloud can develop underneath the base of the cloud. And from that wall cloud is where we get our tornado. So hope that all helps. So this is more about the mature stage. And I've kind of shown a little bit about um, kind of the what makes the mature stage so kind of scary. And it, it lasts for a little while. It needs to be fed by an updraft. Um, one feature we're going to be talking more about associated with um, this cumulonimbus cloud is um, uh, remember that the, the, the layer of the Earth that we're all walking around in is the troposphere. That's where weather occurs in the troposphere. And the tr top of the troposphere is the tropopause right before you get to the stratosphere. And actually, as that unstable air bumps up against the tropopause, it doesn't want to actually go into the stratosphere where it's basically a, a temperature inversion. There's kind of a lid there at the top of the troposphere. And so it flattens out and it creates this anvil. And so anyway, <laughs> anvil. And actually, they will tell you in spotter training that anvil actually gives you direction as to where direction the storm is moving. Then the last stage is the dissipating stage. And, and again, whether this is a supercell or whether this is a cell part of a squall line or mesoscale convective complex, as many cells working within the big um, weather system, um, they all go through these three stages. And notice what we have with the dissipating stage. We have lost our updraft. have a few kind of little peterly lines up here, but we have no more. We have no more updraft, <laughs> okay? So all we have is downdraft. And actually, you're not going to see your severe weather here. You're not going to see your lightning and that sort of thing in the dissipating stage. So it's just kind of